Google just launched a new model in the past week or so, Gemini 2.5 Pro, and it is killer. It does a few things very, very well, and one thing not so well. So let's jump into it and see what all the hype is about. Let me get my big head out of the way. Cool. So kind of the high level zoop things to know about. The thing that jumped out to me the most is the 1 million context window. This is just absolutely insane. We'll get into some more kind of examples here of, of what this even means for, for RAG. But high level stuff out of the box, PDF support, which is super nice. So you can send things that contain tables and charts and it'll be able to parse those. So you don't have to set up your own parser, which can be like a huge pain in the butt. And here's like a little code kind of snippet from that. It's using the old 2.0 flash model, which is a great model. So it's available via Vertex, I believe the Gemini chat app probably as well, and then also in the in the API. And more companies are gonna start doing this. Manthropic has some beta features for, for support of PDFs. I don't think OpenAI has it yet, um, but this is gonna be something that I'd like to definitely kind of watch going forward because handling all these PDFs is, it's, it's annoying. We had to do it for a client project, spin up something in AWS called Textract, which is good and helpful, but is like costly. It's like a third, party thing you have to manage. Being able to do it directly through the API providers is like a huge thing. And my guess is that by, you know, the next you know, end of the year, all of them will support native PDF support. So it has search, which they call grounding, basically grounding in Google search, which obviously they're going to be very good at. Image parsing and editing. This stuff is really interesting. There's been a lot of kind of demos floating around of you can upload a picture and have it change really small things, like even like the color of my glasses. And it's very good at doing that. Now it's a thinking model. The thoughts aren't revealed in the API only in the output, like when you're using Vertex, or excuse me, when you're in the AI studio, multimodal uh, Vertex access coming soon. So API access coming in the coming weeks, unless you already have special access to it. Look at pricing and a few other kind of interesting notes here. So we'll go over to the release first. And, you know, coming through this, the thing that stuck out to me the most was performance on Humanity's last exam here. So this was, I believe, mostly created by, by OpenAI. So to be OpenAI at its own benchmark is pretty, pretty interesting and do it pretty hand handedly, um, you know, the 20 or like 30. Um, notably not super good at coding. Um, so not as good as Claude 3.7 Sonnet by like a, a far margin. This seems to be kind of what people still def like will default to when using cursor Bolt, any of these things. And Bolt, for example, defaults to 3.7. They don't like to change it. That's the one that they have decided to use. So those are the two main things that stuck out on the kind of benchmark side of things. I mean, yeah, like every benchmark, you know, they are like generally pretty, pretty high. They've done a bunch of stuff on the coding performance side. And we have an example for this. And I've been using it for coding and I actually really, really like it. I would like to be able to kind of have support this in, in other coding tools. The modality, super large context window, 1 million, it's going to be 2 million, which is insane. For example, for reference, the Great Gatsby is, I believe, 66,000 tokens. We have a, a prompt and prompt of that you can use to run your own kind of needle in a haystack experiments. I'll put a link to below. It has a full Great Gatsby attached. Yeah, this is 64,000 tokens. So you could attach like what, like 20 of these or something, 18 in the million like context, like hard to even wrap your head around. That's obviously like a ton of tokens. You can do like whole code basis with that. And yeah, so I've been putting it through its paces a little bit and like everyone else built a 5JS game. So I'll show you exactly what I did. There's no like, no editing, no fluff. I said, make me a captivating space invader style game, but make it dog themed. I just got a puppy. So dogs are, are very top of mind. P5, blah, blah, blah. And so you can see it, it will give its thought process. And by the way, you can see all the toolings, the kind of grounding, function calling, code execution, structured output, all that fun stuff over here. And so it goes blah, blah, blah. Here's the code. I didn't even read it because we're, we're just for the demo purposes, but it also gives like a little bit of info of what it built, um, how it runs, the emojis, stuff like that. So let's go over to our editor here. I just pasted the code in. And let's make me a little smaller, move me around a little bit. And we hit enter and we are good to go. It works pretty well. So space to shoot, it's dogs versus cats, which is funny. 
it doesn't uh, it looks like wow the, ha the houses are actually blocking things oh and then they die eventually too well that is really cool um because if they didn't if the houses didn't like uh, move like you know die or get broken you could just stay behind it the whole time but it's built in such that they have a certain life we can see i have lives in the upper right corner i can tap very quickly i built a space invader recently using using a 3.7 on it and it was not as good as this the movement was actually really really difficult for some reason a lot of the other stuff was really good um, and i got it to be good eventually but and you can see they're moving left to right and they also are going down row by row i wonder what happens if we win the game or is there maybe another level that would be could you believe there's another level let's see Ooh, not so pretty good at this game cool what if you can only get 240 if it's based on time we won't be able to i'm not gonna go through this again but it's pretty crazy that was just just one prompt you'd go back and obviously prompt it again if we wanted to make any changes to it but i mean that's insane the last time i ran this with the google model it was, it was not this good it was a little bit buggy out of the gate that and so a couple of interesting things on the one million context window so large context windows sound great in theory but they often you know there's there's always the worry that adding so much context can confuse the confuse the model so what happens if you actually try to use like the full context window here so i ran my test but admittedly at this point my test of sixty thousand token context you know the context window is like not even really pushing it anymore so scouring the the internet webs was able to find a couple of like interesting threads about people using it in terms of really pushing the context window so uh, seven chapters of pdfs we don't really know how long that is that's probably actually less than what i was working around with so to talk context of code pick some css issues and miss you in the middle blah, blah blah this is also important to know is that 2.0 pro came out yeah like two months ago um and so to have 2.5 pro just after that is like insane speed i think if i had to put my money on something right now google is just like firing in all cylinders how to do code review blah, blah blah it does do this thing where it will like touch code it's not really supposed to like a little just like reformatting and stuff which is kind of annoying it does this it does this with writing as well like if you have it like if you wanted to like specifically do one thing and like a couple of paragraphs it might touch up other things which is kind of annoying but probably get it around with like a little engineering Let's see what else here so this is from someone who is saying that he's put 230 yeah the original post here was related to plot 3.7 sonnet which did not work well for this so a thousand poems 230k in tokens and didn't work with 3.7 sonnet just a few days ago and then it worked with 2.5 pro let's see what this last one was 600k tokens able to to solve it so I always try to look for the out for these and this is definitely the most like positive you know like null and haystack stuff that i've seen it's all anecdotal and everything along those lines but i think it's really it's like insane i'm going to run some more tests here and you can i'll link to the needle and haystack with the great gatsby that you can try out below but we'll do like another video upcoming about this but it, what does this kind of mean for rag i think is like a interesting question that we've kind of been thinking a lot about especially at prompt hub and like what the work that we're doing the people that we're working with what does it mean when the context windows keep getting bigger because Historically, context windows have kind of been large for some time, especially from the Google models, but they haven't been super precise with, with recall based on like the teams that we've worked with. But I think that is like going to get solved. Additionally, it's all just cheaper and faster too. That was the other issue. If like, if we're going to stuff the context window and not do rag, how cheap and fast is it going to be? So from a pricing perspective, just to kind of level set. So right now 2.5 pro is, is free and they don't really, they haven't released what it's going to cost, but 2.0 flash we could think the pro version will probably be more expensive but it's 10 cents per million and 40 cents per million and if we look at the other two like leading models from anthropic and open ai so this is a 3.7 sonnet three and 15 so that's like too much of a percentage increase for my brain to the grok like for a thousand and then 1.1 and 4.4 for the mini model which is like more relevant 2.7 and 2.0 flash or obviously a thinking and a non-thinking model so it's a little bit this is like a much more closer context so much cheaper it's super fast and the context window is really big so what does that mean for a rag and so to give just like a little bit of a level level set these images are from ai jason's video on this which i'll link below it's amazing content and so comparing the two generally speaking rag you have some vector database where you have 
a bunch of context in there, broken into chunks, embedded. And so when a user asks a question, you will retrieve some chunks based on some retrieval logic, based on semantic similarity or something along those lines. So basically, user asks a question, you go to the database, you get some info that's related to that question, you pass it along to the, to the model as well. <clears throat> and so, for example, you have 100,000 documents, they get split into chunks, those get created to embeddings, those live in that vector database. And then when the user asks a question, it's gonna go create an embedding out of that question, throw that, compare that to what's in the database, pull out certain things, pull out the top whatever results, and then send the question along with the chunks to the model. And it's, you can just kind of tell, there's a lot of errors, there's a lot of things going on, there's a lot of places where this can break, so it's complex. It can add latency. It's nice because it's modular and it's easy to, uh, to update this, this database as context and data changes. So there are definitely some benefits to it in some areas where it might make more sense to try and do this. I try to look for simple approaches when building anything kind of AI. But I would always start with just kind of trying to stuff the context window and do some like prompt engineering type work and see how that works, run some evals and see how it works. And that's generally what this kind of CAG is, this new, relatively new term, some capacity, but basically caching all the, all the content. So rather than doing all those other steps, you basically just have the question, you have that large document, you cache it. So the model only has to process it at once and then it can get, retrieve it very quickly. So there's not really like a latency issue and it's much simpler to implement here. So this looks really similar to that code example that we saw initially where we're passing PDF and we're asking some, some questions about it. So, you know, if, if the prompt was something like, you know, what is the main point of this document or you know, what was the financial performance of this company in the Q3 of 2025? And you have a bunch of like, you know, reports in here about that. Instead of having to do this kind of like multi-step, go through all these things, basically you're relying on the model. So it's kind of like more of a, <laughs> it's like a, a vibes based retrieval where you're really putting a lot of trust in that the model can go and find what it needs to find. Like I said, you can do some clever prompt engineering here to kind of beef up what is actually being being sent. And that like won't really impact latency too much. And so I'm expecting to see more of this, something we are going to start kind of testing out a little bit more just internally on a few like projects that we have to see how it works. Because simplicity is great. The less like points of failure, the better, especially because these things are super hard to troubleshoot sometimes. And so, especially because this context window is also going to going up to 2 million. So now you're really thinking about, hey, we can handle like whole code bases in a, in a single prompt. It's pretty fast. It's pretty cheap. It becomes a, a point where you really have to compare the two approaches to, to generation and to, you know, providing model context. In some cases, maybe if the data is updating like very, very often, you might want to have a database for that because that's like a little bit better. I don't know. It's like super uh, context dependent about what you are, are working on. And so that's our initial thoughts. We'll obviously have this added to a prompt of like whenever it comes out, but go play around with it. Maybe think about how you can implement this in terms of ripping out your ag and trying out this new approach. and. Yeah, I mean, Google keeps firing on all, all cylinders, so keep an eye on whatever the hell that they are doing because they are clearly trending up in the right direction.